Hey there, marketing analytics students. In this video, we are going to illustrate how to use Excel spreadsheet modeling to figure out the right a la carte price and product bundle price in order to maximize profit. The example that we're going to be using in this case is a small business that specializes in selling office furniture. We'll focus on three core products, a chair, a table, and a monitor stand. At this point, we don't know what the optimal a la carte price is for each one of the options, and we'd like to figure out how to best set the bundle price for any two products or all three products. In this scenario, we've had already conducted some survey research from a group of our target market, and we've established how much they value each individual product. Using just that information and some a little bit of information about the variable costs associated with selling each product, we're going to figure out exactly how we should set these prices. In this video, there's quite a few technical steps. I encourage you to have your Excel spreadsheet alongside. And also keep in mind, I use a variety of different Excel functions and you may not necessarily be very comfortable with all of them. While I do explain how they work, you may need to do a little Google searching to understand in depth how a few of the more advanced functions work. Let's take a look at this uh, spreadsheet that's set up so that we can optimize the price mix of our products and pricing bundles for this uh, office furniture case. Looks like a lot, but let's break down each individual piece and we'll see how they all come together to set up a situation where we can optimize our price. First, let's take a look at the data that we have here in columns A through D. Uh, this is the information that we actually captured through primary research or we've estimated through some sort of econometric model or something else. We have 500 customers. And for each one of these 500 customers, we have information about how much they value the chair, the table, and the monitor stand. So customer 1001 here would pay up to $185 for the chair because they value it that much, $833 for the table and $100 for the monitor stand. The next important part of this spreadsheet model is where we set up our pricing information for our single, double bundles, and triple bundles. So for the chair, table, monitor stand, and all of the potential combinations here, we have our input values for our pricing options. These are just raw values that eventually we're going to ask Microsoft Solver to toggle for us and try to figure out the optimal way to price uh, each one of these uh, products and bundles. For the variable costs, the variable cost per unit sold, these would be given by management. And then for the double and triple bundles, we just assume that the double bundles and triple bundles are the addition of each one of these variable costs if we sell these units. And then down here for the bundle discount, this is just information that we can look at. This is information that we could look at and uh, report to management, where how big of a bundle discount are we offering for each one of the bundles relative to the individual a la carte uh, products. So for example, here for the chair and table, right now at a price of $1,050 for the bundle, uh, we're off, that means we're offering a 2.3% discount from the a la carte unit pricing. So obviously as we change our pricing options here, we'll be changing the bundle discount. And a bundle discount should always be something positive and greater than zero, right? Now let's draw our attention to the blue section of this uh, spreadsheet. Here's where we determine what consumer surplus is for each one of the combinations of products. Let's take a first take a look at just the individual a la carte products here. We can see some negative values and positive values. And these are simply just the difference between what someone valued a particular a la carte product offering at and what price we're charging. So for customer 1001, since we're presently charging $500, for the chair, but they only valued at $185, their surplus would be negative $315 if they made the purchase, which would indicate, of course, that they would not be willing to buy this product because it does not leave them better off. But for the table at $575, they value the table at $833, leaving them 
positively better off, so they would be interested in purchasing uh, this a la carte option, assuming there's no other better alternative. Alternative. Our bundle options here are quite important. Let's draw our attention to the table and monitor stand. For the table and monitor stand, we simply assume a simple additive valuation model for the consumer. So they value the table at $833 and the monitor at $100. So they, in total, they value this combination at $933. And if we're offering that combination at $600, that means they're better off $333. And if we just visually look across all of the available choices here for this particular consumer, we see that the option that leaves them the best off is in fact buying the table and monitor stand. Now that we have our pricing information set up, we have our valuation information set up, and we know what consumer surplus is for each one of the available options, now we have to determine which version of the product that we think the consumer will buy, if any. Again, focusing on consumer 1001, we set up a column here that simply says that simply searches for the max surplus across all of the available options. And we already observed that they, the max surplus was $333 here for the table and monitor stand. But for consumer uh, 1002, the max surplus was three, uh, $314, and that is consistent with the uh, triple bundle of the chair, table, and monitor stand. So now we know what leaves them best off. Now we have to figure out which option of the product uh, combinations they'll buy. We accomplish that in column M here. We use a simple match function. The match function right here simply says, all right, what value within a row do you want me to look for? I said, okay, go find this max value within that row here, which is numbered one through seven and return the value of the number of the row that that value is found in. So in this instance, for this uh, first consumer, we see that it was the sixth position where 333 was located. So we now know that they're buying uh, option six here. Whereas for the $314 for consumer uh, 1002, well, that was found in position seven. Notice also that the match function is wrapped around with an if function where it asks if L9 or the column L is greater than zero, meaning the max surplus is some value greater than zero. If not, then return a value of zero, meaning they won't buy anything. Let's see an example of that. If we go down here to uh, row 52 and respondent uh, 1045, we see that there was no option that actually left them better off than just keeping money in their pocket. So the if function does the last bit of work here and says, well, if L52 um, is not greater than zero, meaning it's false, uh, go ahead and return that value of zero, which we would interpret as them not buying anything. So at this point, we, we've done a lot of work here. We actually know which version of the product combinations the person will buy. And we actually have a index here, number that actually indicates what value that would be. So now we just need to wrap this up and calculate our total profit uh, based on our costs and the choices that consumers will make. First, let's calculate the uh, revenue that we would uh, capture from each individual uh, person. So what we use here is, uh, first of all, we, we make sure that we are in fact selling a product. So uh, if M8, so that's the which product option to buy is greater than zero, meaning remember zero is that they didn't buy anything. Uh, so if it's greater than zero, we know that they bought some sort of combination. We then use the index function here. And the index function says, okay, uh, go ahead and look within E4 to K4 are pricing options, which has a only one row, but return the column number of this, of this index value equal to M8. So in our case, we already know it's six or seven or two or whatever particular option the person would, bought, would buy. So now that we're using this index function, we said, okay, go look within this uh, one by seven array and return the first row M8 
uh, column, which in our case is six, and return that value here. And since that's the price that we're selling that particular product combination for, we know that's the total revenue that we would make off of that consumer. For profits, it's, it's much the same. The only difference here now is that we take our revenue, which we observed here in column N, and then we subtract our variable cost. So we again use the exact same approach of the, uh, the index function wrapped around with an if function. So if this works correctly, uh, that would imply that we should be able to change our input pricing options here which of course could change consumer surplus here in the blue region, which could then of course change what is the maximum surplus a given consumer might derive, which might change which option they would buy, which changes the revenue we might make from a particular customer, and of course that changes the profit. So let's just see if toggling any of this has an effect. Uh, let's set our triple bundle price up to $1,200. And as we might imagine, when we increase the price of the triple bundle, it, if anything, becomes less appealing to any individual consumer. And we see that quite a few people prefer different options and our total profit and revenue change accordingly. Okay, so now that we have a functioning spreadsheet, we have input values, the price that we want to set, and we have the ability to uh, determine what our profit would be uh, based on the changing of these inputs. Now our challenge here is to set up our optimization problem and that includes uh, a, a few sort of seemingly odd wrinkles that we need to uh, set. So let's talk about those. Okay, to set up our optimization problem, we're going to need to set a minimum price that we're going to sell each one of the uh, products and product bundles at and a maximum price that we're willing to tolerate. And we also need to make sure that our pricing for the double or triple bundles doesn't um, do anything illogical or any not anything nonsensical. And we can set those constraints up through a series of uh, logical statements. And let's illustrate those here in this orange section. It looks like a lot, but it, and it takes a bit of work, but it does, it does make sense once we see what's going on. So the easier challenge here is just to figure out, well, what's the absolute maximum price we might be willing to set for the chair, table, monitor, and the bundles? And all we do here is we just say, well, if there's some sort of hypothetical maximum, we know that we should never charge a price that's greater than the maximum any individual person values the product at. So here in uh, R7 down to R13, we just have a series of max uh, functions. Let's show you an example of the max chair here. And it just looks back at the valuations that every individual respondent had for the chair. And we say, okay, that's 800 and uh, the max value that anyone had was $871 for the chair. So we already know that if we charged $870, two dollars for the chair not a single person would be interested in buying it so we wouldn't even entertain setting the price that high for the bundles we do the same thing of course now we would just add the maximum values together next we have to set up some rules for how our price bundling uh, has to function so the first rule and i'll draw your attention here to the brighter orange highlighted areas is that we don't want a situation where the bundle pricing is ever greater than the a la carte pricing. So in other words, if we had two products that had an a la carte price of $100, we wouldn't charge a bundle price of $250. That's nonsensical. So we have a bunch of if-then rules here that set up warnings to see if we make any mistakes. Let's take a look at the one here in S16. This asks, is the bundle chair and table price greater than the a la carte chair and table price? So the if function looks at the price of H4, our current price set up here, and says, is it less than 
e4 plus e5 and it should be right if it's if we follow the rules of price bundling correctly it should be something less than the a la carte pricing and if that's true it turns a value of zero we interpret in this case zero as being a good thing we we didn't break the rules of price bundling if it's false that's a bad thing we violated the rules of price bundling and we return a one let's just show that happening here let's increase the price of the uh, bundle up to like say two thousand dollars and we should see the mistake here and says, okay, that's not a good thing. So we'll revert that. And we do that for all the other ones as well. And we can actually see here that when we were playing around with the spreadsheet, we actually violated one of those rules earlier. So it's asking, is the bundle chair table and monitor stand greater than the a la carte pricing? So right now our spreadsheet is actually set up in a way that does not make sense. We're charging $1,200 for as a bundled price for all three a la carte options. But if we look here, we can see that the for the single products, the summated value is uh, $1,175. So right now our triple bundle prices uh, does not make any sense. So we're going to lower this here to $1,150. And by not now, we're actually offering some sort of discount to the consumer to buy a triple bundle. And we no longer violate that, that rule. The other rule that we want to make sure we set up here is that the bundle price Although it needs to be lower than uh, the a la carte options, it sh the bundle price shouldn't be something lower than the a la carte price of one individual option uh, of the a la carte. So let's here focus in on the, the this one here in row 17. It's asking, is the bundle chair plus table option less than just the chair price itself? So if we look here at uh, bundle chair and table. Right now we don't have a problem. We're charging uh, 1050 here, which is certainly not less than just the price of the chair itself. So let's violate that rule and see what happens. So if I drop this down to 450, so now the bundle price is actually cheaper than the individual price and we see the error trigger. Again, right now, uh, other than just being alerted that there's an error, we aren't really doing anything with it. This will all uh, come together when we set up our solver model. So after we set up this kind of relatively elaborate array of uh, error checks that return uh, zeros and ones, we can simply sum these all up down here, simple sum function, and just keep in mind that we can't allow any of these mistakes to happen when we mess around with our pricing. We don't want any of these sort of flips or, or problems in our bundles to occur. So the rule that we'll set in Solver is that this particular cell here, S29, must always equal zero. Okay, so with our input output model all set up previously and we set up a space where the rules of the game have been properly set up. We are ready to go ahead and run our solver model. So if we go to data and solver, I already have it set up here. I'll, I'll just describe it to you. And keep in mind, if you don't want to set up yourself in the corresponding spreadsheet, hiding over here in the far right hand side, I do have the program set up so that you can go ahead and just load this in yourself if you want. So what's our goal here? Well, our goal is to maximize profit. So we have uh, 07. We want to maximize it. What are we changing? Well, we're changing all of our different price options here. So E4 to K4. And what are some of the other constraints that we're playing, uh, we're playing by? Well, first, we're going to make unconstrained variables non-negative. So for E4 to K4, the rule here is that these values need to be positive, right? Non-negative. So we already set the minimum that we, they can't be less than zero. And then for all of the other uh, top constraints here, we're just referring to each one of our pricing options and saying that the maximum price that we're willing to set these at is equal to the maximum price that we set up over here. Right, so, so for F, uh, F4 here, which is our table, it must be something, we need to set the price something less than $1,300. And then finally, this little constraint is very important. This is where after we set up all these elaborate if-then rules checking for errors and flips and 
poor logic in our pricing, our price bundling, we need to make sure that that never trips and turns into a value uh, greater than uh, zero. So we say, okay, the constraint is as, as you're searching around for an optimal price, make sure that it's always equal to zero. And now that we have a minimum and maximum set for each one of our inputs, uh, we can use the evolutionary solving algorithm without going to too much detail here. Uh, notice I, the evolutionary solving algorithm does iterate, of course. I set a random seed. Uh, I've set a lengthy amount of time before an improvement. Uh, this is a rather uh, beastie problem. I've, I've set it to not run longer than 360 seconds. And of course, uh, depending on the pro speed of your processor on your machine, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean it'll go through as many iterations as mine will or it might go through more. But so we, we won't actually necessarily trust that we found the global optima, but this should illustrate that we can at least improve our current profit estimate from our, our current uh, baseline. So let's go ahead and run this and let it go. Okay, let's keep in mind that we stopped solver after a certain amount of time, not necessarily because it thought it found the terminal solution. So the numbers that I'm showing here might look a little different than what you see if you run this yourself, and it may not actually be the absolute optimal solution. Ah, here we see, uh, based on our results, we can actually improve our total profit quite a bit uh, by offering much steeper uh, bundle discounts and changing the pricing of our individual a la carte options as well. And if we look down here, I actually see that the way that our, our current pricing optimization model is set up, it suggests that while we aren't gonna be able to sell anything to about 20% of our customers, most people are going to prefer, or I should say most, the mode of people are going to prefer the triple bundle option uh, as well as the double bundle options. And a few people will buy just the monitor stand but in our current optimization setup, actually nobody is going to purchase the chair or table a la carte uh, alone. In this illustration here, we've demonstrated that you can absolutely optimize profit, but let's uh, take a quick glance here and look at what we might estimate our total profit might be if we simply just optimize price, but we don't impose a price bundling setup. Okay, so on this tab, we are going to try to optimize the price for each one of the a la carte options uh, without entertaining any sort of price bundling options. So the spread up is mostly the same, but there are a few things we have to do a little different. Let's look here at customer 1002. Notice that here where we were once showing the consumer surplus, uh, we've wrapped that consumer surplus calculation with an if then statement that simply says if consumer surplus is positive, return a value of one, otherwise zero. And the reason we're doing this is a one would indicate that the person would buy this a la carte option. So the logic here is in a world where we don't offer price bundles, uh, somebody might buy more than one option, right? They might buy both the chair and the table as an a la carte option, and we need to uh, account for that. So customer 1002 here has positive surplus for both the chair and the table. So we would sell them both and we would make a revenue of $1,000 in the current setup because we would sell both options. Uh, there's a few other tiny differences in how we derived our calculations here, but the setup is, is mostly the same. So I leave it to you to kind of check out the key differences. Our, our goal here though is still to set up uh, the optimization of profit given changing these inputs. So let's go ahead and go to solver. I already have the solver set up. Again, the, the program for this version of solver is tucked to the far right hand side of the spreadsheet on this tab. Uh, we want to optimize uh, M7, which is our profit. We want to change our cells here, E4 to G4, which is our pricing and subject to the constraints that we for our, our max chair table and monitor stand so we don't want to charge any more than what we know the maximum valuation is for those products and notice we got rid of all of our other constraints here all the other constraints we had previously were entirely designed to make sure that we don't make any goofy setups with our price bundling but we don't have any price bundling here so we can go ahead and just run this so I'll let this solve again um, and we'll let it run for the same amount of time 
and we'll see what our profit estimate is if we don't entertain the idea of price bundling. When we compare our estimated profits between the scenario where we don't entertain any doing any product bundling and where we do bundling, we can see the difference quite clearly. Uh, our profits improve roughly uh, 15% when we have a bundling option. And it's quite informative if you look at what the individual product a la carte prices are set at for the in the bundled scenario. Notice how in the bundled pricing scenario, we increased the a la carte price greater than uh, what they were in the no bundling option. In other words, what we're doing here is we make the a la carte options a little less appealing. And then when we rebundle the products back together and lower the price, the idea is it'll entice individuals to make a purchase uh, that's jointly more beneficial for them and also uh, jointly more beneficial for us.